Hello to so those of you who've joined in on this uh, webcast. My name is Peter and I only have 45 minutes to introduce you to what we call controlled agility and how to manage uh, the PPM setup of projects, portfolios, programs or even products um, in the time of uh, technology and uh, also crisis um, and that whole way of working also remotely um, is sort of what I'm going to touch upon throughout these next 45 minutes. Um, I prepared a little uh, agenda here that has changed quite a little since uh, since we posted the event. And um, the whole idea is that I'm going to give you a basic intro to the company that I work for, Projectum, and then myself, and then give a little background info on market trends that we're seeing right now, uh, which leads into a framework that we have sort of um, uh, evolved and created over the last couple of years called controlled agility, um, which again is the combination of working agile, working traditional, working hybrid, uh, and rolling that up into the portfolio level uh, or even higher up the strategy chain. Then a uh, technology walkthrough, because obviously uh, we would love to, uh, to showcase uh, how it could look like. Um, and for that reason, there's a little walkthrough from sort of uh, from portfolio level all the way down through to, to uh, team collaboration and the actual schedules. And then at the very end, we'll try to do an open Q&A um, if time allows for it. Um, so please feel free to post your questions throughout the session and then I'll look into them uh, when the when the session has ended. So uh, my name is Peter Kirstenholz and I've been working for the last 18 years almost in this industry of project portfolio management. Um, I have uh, been part of founding Projectum, uh, the company I work for uh, back in 2004. And in that entire period, I have uh, more or less only done Microsoft plus project portfolio management. Um, so that's sort of my background. Besides that, I am a Microsoft MVP, uh, getting close to 10 years now in total. So uh, that means I'm a super geek, especially in the area of, uh, of project management. And then I'm also part of the advisory council, helping Microsoft build the backlog for the future of, uh, well, coming generations of both uh, project and portfolio management tools. I am not married to any specific uh, methodology, so um, I have been through PMI, IPMA, PRINCE2, even Skilled Agile and sort of certified in all of those. Um, so that's why I hope that uh, most of what I'm going to show you today is sort of uh, independent on your methodology choice. Um, the whole mission statement or the why of Projectum as a company uh, is to make it our mission to ensure that our users uh, or customers are actually feeling good vibes or feeling good at least when they are working with our tools for portfolios, projects and work management. We believe that that has not been the case in the past. Um, some might have gotten a successful implementation from a company or management perspective, but from a user perspective might not be the same thing. So it's all about users for us uh, and making sure that everyone feels good when they're using the tool. Um, and that's uh, something I'll get back to in the presentation as well. So uh, just in, on a one pager, you could say that Projectum as a Microsoft partner, obviously we are a gold partner. We have won several awards over the years, also on the global scene. We have our solutions that are ready to go. Uh, one of them is called Power PPM. I'll show you that today. Um, then, of course, we do a lot of consulting and in these times, I would say a lot of customers are reaching out for specific hackathons where you set aside two or three days and you sort of find a big problem and we solve it together with the, with the customer or with the company. Um, and sometimes we even release that app uh, at the end of that uh, period of time. So that seems to be a new trend that uh, people are into these very small sprints uh, of uh, fixing problems and then rolling it out immediately. Um, I'll get back to that Microsoft now has that great platform to actually support that way of working. Um, then we have our products, uh, again, Power PPM, Team Planner for Resource Management and Presented, which allows you to bring any data from any Microsoft source, but also other sources, and using Flow straight into a PowerPoint document uh, or Word. And finally, support, obviously, so we call it customer care. Uh, and for many, that's not just uh, project managers, it's it's everything. It could be admins, uh, integration experts, uh, BI people, whatever it is, as long as it's, uh, I would say, technology and related to project portfolio management, we, we tend to think we are sort of the best ones out there uh, to, to help you with that. So um, again, uh, we have won several awards and in the past that was good because it, it sort of allowed us to explain why, how good we were as a, as a consultant uh, company or a consulting company and also on a personal level. I think uh, some of the things I'm going to share today is actually that we now have a platform 
And because we finally have a, a, a platform, um, we are now able to actually bring our, our expertise uh, into uh, simple apps that you can sort of implement and install within a matter of, of days and not months. Um, so uh, we're really excited to show you both uh, our framework, obviously, but also how you can actually roll it out in the real way um, to your end users. Um, we've worked with different customers. So again, lots of these learnings that, that I have uh, would be the sum of, of many of these, um, if, if not more, because we have way more than what you're looking at right here. And what we also see is that it's always in, uh, industry independent or, or I would say vertical independent. We don't see a certain sector or certain segment uh, that, that is more into what we're talking about today uh, than any other uh, sector. Um, any company that's large and runs uh, in a matrix setup, I would say, is, is probably into figuring out what they're spending their money on, how many resources they have available, or if they have too many, um, who should they hire next year, or how does the financial forecast look end of this year? Are we aligned on strategy? Will we make the deadlines? And so on and so forth. That sort of uh, is something that um, is relevant for any sort of organization. So, um, just to give a little uh, intro here, um, PPM market trends, I could talk a whole lot about that. I, I won't, but um, I just highlighted a few things. Um, I think uh, a little while back, uh, Forbes went out and said, so in all of this uh, times of change and digital transformation, what about the PMO? Um, and I think still it's sort of uh, interesting if, if PMO or the first P at least stands for portfolio program, project or product. But the other part that's relevant is that 92% of uh, quite a lot of executives that were asked or surveyed um, still consider the PMO a driving force of uh, transforming the business. So when it comes to uh, putting strategy into play or into action or execution, then the PMO is the driver behind that. So uh, it might be that some things have changed because of agile way of working, for instance, um, or that we require more loose scope management. But to go from A to Z uh, and making sure that we reach uh, deadlines or that we are uh, aligned with strategy is obviously still super important. I also added my own comment down here because um, for quite a few years, I've heard a lot about these agile teams being fixed in terms of size. Uh, which could easily be translated into this team doing this product uh, is static. So you might be able to change the backlog for them, but the sizing is the same. And I think uh, that's fine and, and, and all good with that, uh, as long as you then know what sort of benefits that specific um, team is giving back in return to the business. Uh, because any project or any project team, even though we don't call it a project, let's just call it a team doing some work, it's still an investment from a business perspective, and we need to understand how that uh, investment is, is performing. And to answer that question, we need to know what benefits they're driving in return to the business. And I see a whole lot of companies who aren't able to answer that question, but who can only explain that team A, B, and C has this size or this capacity, and that we can't change that. Uh, I believe that any Agile team, also the capacity of that team, should be able to resize according to needs or, for instance, in times of COVID-19, um, nothing is static. And if, in fact, it is static, then I would say that the, the whole organization um, would sub suddenly become less Agile than probably uh, initially expected. Um, so strategy execution is also about making buckets or containers for different types of work. And so many companies have been in, in the, what we call the trans, trans, traditional sorry, um, starting point where things were considered uh, portfolios, programs, projects and tasks. And most managers who went out to buy a system ended up buying a system that supported this way of planning, uh, but typically done bottom up. So you created two tasks, you add them into a project or and then you add the project or into the program and then you roll up the program to a portfolio. That's not how business is done today for, for the majority of our, our customers. So they split uh, the way of working into what some would call agile or traditional. Um, and in this case, you can see that also some are trying to get straight from traditional and into what we call scaled agile that probably most of you know. Um, so scaled agile is, is something that we've looked into quite a lot. Um, and what I've learned in the past couple of years is that no one makes the, the shortcut from, from, let's call it the starting point traditional and straight into scaled agile. First off, it takes a lot of time. It's a whole culture that you're changing. And secondly, in that period of time, sometimes years, then you are something else. You're not safe and you're not traditional. So you probably are one of these three buckets down here. 
it's a way of making it simple, but one could be that you are bimodal, so you sort of split up your way of working into traditional, so so the get charts, you could argue, and then the, the Kanban boards on the left side here, and up here you probably have a portfolio overview. Agile with PMO means that you have uh, no project managers, it's all scrum masters or product owners, but you still have some sort of uh, portfolio management or program management taking place up here, but no project managers as such. And hybrid is the combination um, where you combine, for instance, uh, software with a physical product. It could be uh, my phone. So it has a go to market launch date. So that's very much uh, waterfall and gap charting or traditional. But inside it also has software that even though we've released the product, still needs maintenance. Some would argue that's a DevOps setup, but still that would be in the hybrid bucket because not, both the physical product and the software wouldn't exist without each other. So it, it's connected. Um, so hybrid would be that one. And I think it's important that some customers or organizations figure out uh, sort of who they can live with being until they get to that, if that's the end goal, that scaled agile situation. Then um, Gartner recently also in 20, uh, 2019, uh, talks about uh, separating the different PPM disciplines. And that means that uh, when you look at PPM or project portfolio management, there are sort of three high level buckets for that. One is when the IT calls us up and says we need a PPM system. If you are in IT, that means something. It means application management probably. It means uh, internal business cases uh, with the ROI and payback and sort of those things. Um, when we talk about enterprise program portfolio management, then it's, then it's the entire company who are thinking projects. So uh, from ideation, so capturing ideas and converting them into business cases, then executing them, tracking them, but across divisions, that's where the EPO, EPMO sorry, steps in. And then we probably have those who, who create software and maintains products. Um, and for those, that's probably sometimes DevOps uh, all the way through, more on that later. But the most important part is that managing the, the performance of these three different buckets up here, you could say it's not necessarily has anything to do with the schedule. I think that's the simplest way of explaining it. So even though you have tasks going on down here, small work items in Planner, in Trello, in Jira, in DevOps, in Project, you they are not sort of rolling up that information to this level. Perhaps a few key deliverables or some sprint end date, but it sort of stops there. And that's the new thing also from, from Gartner's investigation saying that try and disconnect what is called the scheduling activities from the PPM or portfolio management slash strategy initiatives. If we look at capabilities, um, regardless of what you are on the left side here uh, or the slide before this one, then key capabilities would be demand management. That's managing your intake of projects, portfolio management, program management, business intelligence or reporting. Then your work planning, again, going back to separating that one, allocating resources, and then managing capacity. It's two different things. Um, and integration means that we have to integrate different tools or different ways of working, and then perhaps even all the way through to AI. Um, so, so it's changed a little bit the scene of PPM, but not a whole lot. I think the most important learning from this one is that try and separate the schedule from the PPM system. You can combine them if needed, but it's not mandatory that everyone has to roll up the data from a task to a project to a portfolio. Um, so based sorry, on these... Peter, uh, sorry? I'm just going to interrupt you real quick. Uh, so we, we, we just noticed that uh, the Q&A section is not available um, for people. So um, if you have any questions, please send them to marketing at projectum.com and then we will uh, we will uh, hand them over to Peter at the end of the session and we will take the Q&A session there. Yes, thanks Jonathan. All right, so um, moving on to our framework. So all these learnings from all these years and customers, we sort of try to combine into a fast track experience. We call that controlled agility because you need control, but you also need agile. So therefore that name, and we even trademarked, uh, trademarked it in the EU here just after Christmas. Um, and, but it's all about connecting work to strategy, not necessarily work items, just the work that, that gets done. Um, and it's about people, processes, and tools. Um, for us, it's a, it's a framework, I'm sorry there's an E missing here, but it's a framework to help organizations fast track. Um, but fast track what? And in this case, it's about fast tracking uh, the roadmap or the establishing of a new way of working. 
You can't do that overnight. So sometimes time facing those uh, initiatives is what we are here to help you with and especially with a framework to, to sort of uh, guide you. Um, it's all about, again, us helping you out leading this transformation, but also providing best practices or outside in thinking because there are so many organizations that that makes up uh, requirement specs uh, from a very feature oriented perspective. And what we see is that most of these companies have the same requirements, even though one is doing uh, perhaps Lego bricks and the other one is into producing beverages. Um, so that whole magic uh, is, is not to be found typically in the features, but more likely to be found in the culture or the way of working uh, or the actual operating model. Um, and that's a different exercise where sometimes uh, understanding what the market has been doing or others outside your own company is doing is also relevant. Um, and we want to be able to pr provide you with that information. Um, so the, the, the framework, so to speak, is, is made up of these uh, 10 buckets, um, strategic planning, performance reporting, governance, financials, P project management, resource management, time tracking, if relevant, then change driven development that will be your um, agile way of uh, planning and plan driven scheduling where the plan is sort of leading the whole way and that's your uh, traditional or get chart way of working and then collaboration as as an end thing down here where all of all of these things needs to be collaborated upon and that's a different process uh, our framework looks like this uh, if you sort of draw it up um, there's the strategic planning and performance measuring or monitoring up top that's where we need to figure out what should go on inside that bucket in year one, year two, or year three. That typically translates into a rule set or governance that people have to follow, in, uh, allowing the company later on to then roll up info to the performance level. We have project models and processes. So different project types requires different processes. We need to know which ones, and we need to understand that they have to be relevant regardless of you being agile or traditional, so we are still at the very high level of what should you report upon uh, regardless of the way of working uh, with your tasks. Then we have people management as a thing that goes across the entire organization. Obviously, you have line managers who can hire and fire. Typically, project managers cannot. And for that reason, uh, pro uh, sorry, uh, people managers or resource managers are extremely important to have part of this PPM landscape because they actually understand the capacity setup uh, and typically they sit in spreadsheets and we want to bring them into a better experience, but also making sure that they can sort of inject their knowledge into your portfolio planning uh, activities. Time sheeting as another thing, which is also regardless of uh, agile or not, and then uh, collaboration still uh, across all of these different things. You, you might be an individual who needs to time sheet take part of a, a project that is traditional, uh, an agile initiative, and maybe also making sure that you are uh, registered as uh, on vacation next month or whatever it could be from a resource management perspective. So this is our framework and uh, typically uh, the output of these different, uh, well, it's the same framework, but depending on the customer we, we help out, uh, obviously it, it comes out with different wordings on it. Some of the questions that I won't go through now are, are, are these. Um, obviously very high level just for this presentation, but for each of these questions, we'll look at it from a people, process and technology perspective. So it's not enough to just say, we fund our portfolio uh, by the quarter in CapEx and OPEX and off you go. It's also about which roles are doing it, when are we doing it, why are we doing it, uh, who shouldn't be doing it, do we hand over the information to someone else, where do we type it in, should management just sit in spreadsheets or PowerPoints or should they actually be active participants of the PPM platform or on the PPM platform. So it's much more about that than just saying, yeah, we fund our strategy with CapEx and OPEX four times a year. There's more to it. And the same thing goes across for all the other uh, areas where we have some a list of predefined questions that we find highly relevant for you to answer. And then we can combine that info into uh, some key learnings. Which brings me to the other approach is to drive interviews with selected stakeholders. And the why for that is to simply understand the feelings or the intentions of those different roles. Um, workshops obviously is about aligning people. So sometimes we see that we bring in people from different uh, business units who've never met up before we came, uh, which is highly interesting. Uh, some of the most interesting meetings I've had uh, would be when you add a group of controllers and a group of project managers and you sort of see if they can find common ground on what is a good way of managing financials. 
Uh, I'm not going to give you the output of how that looks like typically, but um, that's just one example on where it makes it extremely a whole lot of sense to have those people meet up or at least uh, represent it um, and then see if we can find some, some sort of alignment. Then fit gap analysis. We understand now what is going on uh, as is and perhaps also to be desires both from people and teams and whole business units. That's the ambition part. Then importance is about ranking each of these uh, defined capabilities uh, that is required or business enablers. Um, they can't all be equally important, so we'll do a pairwise comparison on that and sort of rank the whole list. But then we'll add another layer on top, which is complexity. Um, replacing a, a certain system or a certain process uh, might not be that easy. So for that reason, uh, that whole change management experience has also has to be analyzed before we can just say this is what we're going to do. And then finally, hands on. We want all users to even before they get a system to feel how it, you know, uh, or experience how it feels sorry, to work with a system. Uh, and then uh, hopefully that will set the expectations the right way so that we don't get this uh, big bang go live and then people they understand suddenly that that wasn't what they expected and then that whole uh, user satisfaction drops dramatically so to avoid that we want hands on throughout the process and in the day all of these components can give you a roadmap for modernizing how you work um, and obviously most companies can do some of these things themselves uh, but we are just offering ourselves as those who can come with the outside in expertise or thinking and also perhaps accelerate some of these um, uh, processes that's related to these buckets. So out of this comes typically a roadmap explaining what to do and how, people and capabilities overview, which roles the needs which capability and, and how, how to achieve it with technology. As is and to be, that's the typical spider chart, and then an output and typically a present presentation. One example on how it could look like is this one. Um, so for this company, it's important to have a, well, a vision that can be inputted into the system that is then translated into a strategy, typically time phased. Then you fund the PMO or the EPMO office with money, people and obviously time. You don't fund the time, but you want to manage stuff in quarters typically or months or years. And then that PMO office in this case breaks down work into two buckets. Uh, one being agile, one being uh, traditional. You can see that on the left side here, if I zoom in, uh, that we have up here the more typical approach to portfolio management. So strategy, uh, portfolio funding, roadmaps, financial forecasting. I'll get back to how this could look like. Um, then you have your stage gate model, which in this case is one. So regardless of you being plant driven or change driven, you might have different tools to, to do your work in. One being project, the other being Azure DevOps. In this case, it could be Jira as well. But uh, the stage gate approach to from your idea to, to actually being in execution and closing down your work will be the same approach. Um, work management means it's it's uh, in this case not defined as a project management, but just a work management uh, responsibility, which means you are taking care of managing scope, cost, benefits, deliverables, KPIs, resources and baselines. And you have to do that regardless of you being in an agile situation or plan driven situation. Only when we get to the planning and scheduling and tracking of those tasks, we'll find some, some changes. Uh, for instance, we talk phases here, here we talk iterations and so forth. Time tracking uh, done in this way and resource management over here done with, with this approach. So the whole idea is just to give you an example on how uh, you can typically get some, some wording suddenly that we can all understand within the organization with or without being agile or traditional uh, and start communicating that to your stakeholders. And then again on the left side, sorry, on the right side, what I'm trying to explain here is that, for instance, here you'll find that even though we don't manage um, an agile project the same way as a normal project or traditional project, what is essential is that uh, even in, that, in the most agile situation, you will have time as a factor, months, weeks, days, years. You'll have people that has a cost or rate per hour. So for that reason, it's actually quite easy to calculate the cost of running this agile initiative per month, per quarter. Uh, which makes it easy to compare with the typical uh, project world where you also have your tasks with a cost, maybe even hardware or other things as well besides people. But if you have time faced financials and people, that is comparable uh, across the two different ways of working. And therefore, we can roll it up into a higher level and explain to the to the overall business uh, committee or management group what is the performance right now compared to the strategy we, we set forth. 
Um, another example of an output could be that we investigate or figure out which key roles are initially the users uh, of the system uh, or the work, ma work management tools. Um, and then we figure out the key four or five uh, capabilities. And obviously there's a larger explanation behind e each of these. Um, but for these uh, capabilities, again, we can communicate uh, this across the business and also let them know who is going to work in, in which tool and, and why. Uh, and maybe there's also a more uh, a bigger backend uh, enabler or platform enabler, as we call it, that can also be emphasized or explained. Um, so these were just a few simple examples of output. Well, and this is a final one again, uh, people, technology and process and sort of what should be done when before you end up uh, at the very uh, uh, perfect dream scenario um, end of 2022 in this case. So. That was just to give you an intro to, to the framework. Um, so technology wise, first off, we have anchored all our uh, investments as of today and in the past year and going forward on the Microsoft Power Platform. Um, and we've done that because that is in fact the enabler for us. That's a real business enabler and technology enabler. Because with this platform, we can actually, with very uh, um, simple way of, of um, configuring the system more than developing or coding, tailor any sort of uh, solution so that it's fitted to, to the way of working for the company. So an easier way of saying this is that no matter how you work, you can configure the, 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 the application that you need um, to, to support that way of working. In the past, it was more like what is out of the box and therefore uh, some companies tried to sort of align with what was out of the box and others, they went into uh, .NET development to, to make it their own way of working um, on top of what was out of the box. And in this new world of Power Platform, you should sort of uh, understand this is as being just a simple platform with a set of uh, predefined Lego bricks that can easily be be placed on top of each other. The Power Platform brings you so many features and capabilities, not just for project portfolio management, but for, for, for every sort of managing of, of work. Um, and one key thing here is that you can plan top down. So if you want to start off by doing a portfolio before you even do a project, that's all fine. If you want to start off by creating a steering group, and then after that you connect steering groups to projects or whatever it could be, uh, it's all uh, supported with what we call entities. You can create any entity that you want to. Um, so I'm not going to go through these in the details, but just highlighting, highlighting two more. Um, we have stage gates and that whole business process and task automation everywhere we go into the system. So even for an idea or a risk or an issue or a change request, we can without any code quickly attach an approval flow uh, or a stage gate uh, process. So we have to, to think of stage gate models as more than just for um, projects. It's also uh, smaller approval flows for any sort of incident that you have or issue or ticket and similar um, that you can certainly create without any sort of development. Every data you create, including custom data, goes into what is called the common data service. So that's one report actually, or one repository for your, for your report data. And that's, that's a big thing because in the past, uh, before Power Platform, um, we all ha always had SharePoint as the backend, which ensured sort of that a lot of data was distributed. Some went into this SharePoint site, some into this. So to get the overview required quite some skills uh, and sometimes it wasn't, it was actually possible, impossible, sorry, to, to even get the overview. Anyways, um, the final box ready for teams. So uh, I'm running this meeting in teams and everything that, that we do works inside Teams natively. Um, so that's another cool thing as well. When we look at uh, the PPM space and also controlled agility, what we see is that we have Office 365 as where we can have Teams tasks, Office doc documents. Very soon you'll see a new tasks add-in for, for Teams coming out by Microsoft that will initially work with um, Planner. So that from an individual perspective, you can get the full overview in a Kanban experience on what you have been assigned to. It will also connect to Outlook tasks and to-dos. Um, so that's something to expect a lot from. Then we have Power Apps where we have added an accelerator or a solution on top called Power PPM that gives you portfolios, programs that hold PMO way of working um, as a hub experience. Then we have Azure DevOps for the software developers. Sometimes it's Jira. There we have connectors out of the box to the Power Platform that can, without integration uh, in, in terms of development, we can actually import and export data through what is called a data flow, which is a service. 
We have Power BI, which are all your reports and dashboards and alerts. Then the new project, which is about planning, but also roadmaps. And the new project also offers Agile and Gantt experience uh, within the same project plan. So you don't have to be forced into any certain methodology. And next to all of these, we've created uh, this tool that we've had for eight years now. It just came out in the latest edition for Teams, uh, which allows you to do resource requests and allocations, and especially for resource managers. So that's sort of uh, the technology. Obviously, Microsoft has, uh, have some, I hope, 50 more uh, technologies that I don't know of, um, but these are the ones that are essential for project portfolio management. So the example that I want to go through is, in this case, uh, the slide I just showed you as an output example. So here again, you have the same um, well headers that I explained initially, and if we just go to the next slide here, you'll find that we start off by looking into this one, this layer up here. For those people sitting up here, it's all about reporting. I'll show you live also in this session um, how it looks like when you get that portfolio of you and you create a project, um, just briefly at least. But the output um, typically looks something like this. People want to be able to pull information uh, and get that sort of real-time experience to what's going on. Um, this example I'm showing you right now shows you a sort of traditional one pager for a project, but it's been trimmed to uh, to the point where it's much more agile, uh, or actually is, a, is able to pull from agile data um, rather than just traditional project plans. Um, so what you see is that you have different program increments, you have sprints, you have planned features and features remaining to sort of give you that burn down effect. You can also obviously see a link straight into where the, the typical project is, is or the entire project is done. And down here you can see the program epics. So that's your key sort, sort of um, a business case for, for uh, well, the explanation at least to, to, to why you're doing certain things within this Agile team, which is then later broken down into actual features. And uh, web experience in this case has been defined as something that will drive 1 million in business value. So again, here we are focused on uh, financial return or financial benefits uh, with a real number behind it. And that's also supported by uh, Scaled Agile in, in their definition of uh, epics, both on, on portfolio level and, and program level. Um, the status of this epic is that it's in progress. It has 10 features planned and features planned that are done would are five. Oh, sorry, planned done. That means that they should have been done with five right now, and they already done seven, which means we are ahead with two. So here we're just counting the features to see if we are ahead or behind based on what was planned up here. That gives us some sort of progress. And then we have the PBIs or the user stories saying that we have done 13 of those. And in this situation, we are uh, uh, asking people to report time on feature level. So for that reason, we can also roll up that actual hours going on on the feature level and now see that we have 860 hours spent on those so far seven features that have been done, which again, timed by an average rate, gives you a cost scenario of 64,000 USD. Comparing that to the business value makes this a very successful investment, uh, also in, in just for this epic. And then of course we can roll that information all the way through and look at actual cost rolled up but also business value rolled up, actual hours rolled up, and so forth. So that's the whole idea about um, combining these, uh, you could argue, uh, features and time sheeting and, and benefits, which is sort of what we used to do in, in the traditional project world, except they still have a backlog, they still have a loose scope, they can still define whatever they need to define within the features because we just count count them. We don't necessarily measure them in terms of how many um, different tasks are in each feature and so forth. So then rolling several different initiatives or project plans up into one roadmap is also now part of project. So the new project offers what is called a roadmap experience. So for each row here, you actually have uh, one project plan. And that project plan could take place in Azure DevOps, or in the new project, actually also in Project Online, uh, the past version of project. So um, this roadmap could, roadmap could be the, the com combined overview on what you want to look at, where you have defined your key dates top down, the super date, you can make many of those, or here, sorry, key dates. And then you can uh, select whatever you want from these different projects and insert them into the roadmap, and then they will automatically be refreshed a couple of times a day. 
uh, with the latest info from those plans. So even if a project has 10,000 tasks, you can just select that one or that milestone that you're looking or interested in, and that will then be shown uh, here and updated when you need it to be. So uh, this, I hope, is a better alternative than, than drawing up these roadmaps uh, within, um, within PowerPoint. Then we have the stage gate model, in this case, uh, from ideation to measurement of benefits uh, with a few gates and some iterations going on in, on the build and deploy. Um, and when it comes to entering in the information or managing the project charter or the project model, this is just one example where we have an application where someone can come in and for each project enter, for instance, name, portfolio, project type, um, a checklist for whether or not it has the goals defined or communication plan and many other things. I'll have time uh, at the end of these, uh, this presentation to show just briefly. Um, resource management is all about going in uh, and as a resource manager, figuring out uh, who are requesting people from my business unit or team, uh, who's available, and tr simply drag dropping them. Sorry, drag dropping them in to um, to the project, so we can uh, track allocations, requests, and free capacity. We can also click on them and rebalance the workload so that Peter is not over allocated or under allocated. Um, we have tons of reports and heat maps uh, and, and so on as well as part of the experience. But this is about replacing a spreadsheet typically. It's not about replacing a Kent chart. So the resource manager experience is, is typically a lot about uh, cells and spreadsheets and, uh, and uh, different tabs in that spreadsheet. We want to get rid of that experience and, and improve that. Um, and that's something we actually believe we, we can do for sure with, with this uh, solution called Team Planner. And then we are uh, now at the level of the work planning or the schedule planning. So Waterfall, Agile Scrum or DevOps. Um, again, different tools uh, for, for different uh, needs. In this case, it's all Microsoft. Um, and starting off with Azure DevOps, I think most know that this is uh, sort of the, the Jira uh, compete. Um, but it, regardless of it being Jira or DevOps, it's the same thing that typically is, uh, is, is done. You have your board, you have your sprints, you have your backlogs, and you can break it down uh, into whatever the level of information that you need to. Uh, the new project, uh, in this case shown from within Microsoft Teams, gives you both both a timeline experience that has been updated and simplified, but also it has the Kanban board, um, and it also has a grid experience. Um, so a sort of the combination of uh, the, the old project, uh, Planner and SharePoint lists all in one, um, which I think is uh, very good because it's sort of uh, allowing the project manager to work the way you want, which is also the Microsoft vision statement. So um, time sheeting again for most, uh, if that experience could be done as in this in this case from within teams, that would be ideal and, and you can. Um, so again, regardless of where work is done, we can pull it into to a, a time sheet experience from within teams and have users simply go in and add their tasks or submit hours or add comments and then submit it and then at some point get the approval as well. Uh, and obviously this is both for admin work, but also for uh, you know, normal project traditional work. Um, and uh, finally, I'm going to share this slide uh, for those who have uh, participated today. Um, I'm not going to go through it now, but this is one example on how some companies have solved the problem of connecting the, the different ways of working. So this is a little bit technical, so I'm just going to fast forward it. But the whole idea is to have a strategy that can be injected into a PPM or PMO experience or tool. And then we can collaborate on the different initiatives. We can also uh, make sure that when we approve something, it goes into your agile execution tool. We then synchronize features or epics back to this portfolio tool so that we can timesheet on certain things if needed, which means we can then report the way I showed it as well in the intro on uh, both progress, uh, cost and benefits. Uh, as uh, something that we know that the boards are in need of. Um, so before we go into the, the Q&A, everything is available in Microsoft Teams. And the, the only two things I want to show you live, if I can just start it off, it would be this one. So uh, right now inside Teams, where uh, the application Power PPM has been loaded. Um, again, I have the different tabs up here. That's one way of working when you are inside Teams. I can click on projects and quickly get the overview of all projects. Um, right now, I'm probably using all my bandwidth to do all of this, uh, but it's coming now. But here you'll find all projects and you could even show a chart to sort of easier help you find that uh, actual project you are in need of. Here you can have different chart types. 
uh, top five projects by cost variance, projects by estimated versus actual hours, or in this case, the planning mode. As you can see, you have an agile icon and a traditional icon. So if I click on a traditional, you'll find, as you can see here, all the projects that are traditionally driven. If I click agile, it will be all your agile projects. So if we take one of these traditional ones and click on the Boston demo, then for each of these initiatives or projects, you'll find a stage gate. And right now I'm in execution. So for that reason, I have all of these um, tabs available to me. I can manage risks. Um, I can manage a, a status report per week. Uh, I have uh, key deliverables and dependencies, for instance. I have a KPI statusing um, where I can simply go in and add text here. And just one cool example on, on the new modern technologies we have today. If I say all is good, for instance here, and then I later say that resources from a KPI perspective are unavailable, then notice what happens up here. I click there and immediately the overall status changes. Uh, better yet, if I don't do a status comment and it's in red and I hit save, then the text will reappear here telling you that your project is red, you should go fix it. And one thing you should do is to add, for instance, uh, comments here. So all of these business rules we finally have in real time. So no check in, check out, publish and all of that. Uh, done in a second, typically most of it. Um, and with built in uh, assistance for, for the actual uh, project managers. In this case, it could be in a user role. Uh, PMO reporting um, could, for instance, be you, you clicking up here and then we embed and load the whole Power BI uh, report from within the, the application, your PPM application. And again, right now I'm using all of it inside Teams as an add-in that we have right here. Uh, so you can find out how many money are you burning or spending on different projects and how are they related to your strategy. So you'll find now that Beta Workplace, we are spending 27% of, of our money right now on that one, and we should spend 20 based on strategy um, uh, priorities. We are also not spending any dollars on next generation products, uh, but we are spending 15% on a, something that has no theme at all. So one way of figuring out things would be to just click here and immediately see these are the projects that are right now defined as uh, running, but without a theme. Uh, this is the strategic score and the benefits that they're driving. Um, so it might, not, it might just be an issue that, that somebody forgot to add a primary driver to them or whatever it is. But this way we can do sort of uh, different reports and portfolio analysis, uh, stage gates, how many tasks are laid, not laid, actual cost, remaining cost, that's your forecast, and so on and so forth. So we don't have time to go through these and that was not uh, the intentions for today. But this is just showing you how everything can be combined into your application that has been custom made on from your side without code and added into Teams as a real add-in. You can even unpin it here and then uh, when end users want to find it, and just click here and your PPM application will pop up and immediately can be inserted and pinned to your uh, menu pane. Uh, as an alternative to create a team and add it into a team, we believe that it's, it's a better experience to just have that PMO or control agility application right inside Teams on the left side here. So now I'm going to open up uh, the gates for um, what we call Q&A, I guess, with the limited time we have left. Um, so maybe I need to ask my, my, my helpers here, Jonathan or Andy, have we had any questions coming in? Hi, Peter. Uh, yes, we, uh, we just received one question here. Um, I'm going to read it up for you. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do you have features to realize the project prioritization exercise every year? like for example, submission of, sub, of a summary, review, questions and decisions. As well, do you have a way to manage the approval life cycle of a project? Uh, submission of BC, review, questions, approval, stage gauge uh, or review? Yes, or, yes to all, but I also think that that was uh, some of the things I showed at the very end here. So the question might have been asked some, when was it asked, 10 minutes ago maybe or 15? Just guessing. Just a couple of minutes, actually. Okay. So. Okay, but I can briefly go into. Uh, let me just show it again. Then um, again, we have strategic themes, and we have strategic drivers. So for each theme, that could be the UN Sustainability Goals. You can add an entire uh, budget for that if you wanted to. Then you break down these goals into related drivers. So this bucket. So for this theme, you have these drivers. These drivers are typically set up in a tangible way so that you can measure uh, something at least on them. 
And then we have business ideas. That's your intake or um, your yeah your intake of of or demand of new initiatives. We are simply going in and creating a new idea. That could be my um, uh, agile super idea. Then you can obviously add your own stuff here. For instance, attaching a business theme, attaching an, a cost, maybe attaching some expected benefits, and then time to ROI, and then you could score it and have votes and all of these things you would expect in, in ideation processes, number of votes, for instance, up here. When I hit save to this, it gets created. Then you have a stage gate process, which is also available for the projects, the programs, and even the portfolios. So when I click next up here, there can be certain things you have to do. One could be to produce a report, for instance. When I click next, it moves on to this one where I can now say, yes, we're going to fund this project now based on an, a report or an analysis. So if I say yes, it opens up this one, as you can see here, which means I can now find a funder. So the person who's paying for this or sponsoring it would be Alan. And yes, please create a project for it. So when I hit save now, then notice how fast this goes. Uh, it's saving, but also in real time, in less than a second, it created the Agile Super Idea as a real project and connected those two entities. So now I can just click here, which brings me into the project bucket. And there I have my open business case where I can start off defining steering groups, description, uh, justification, uh, whatever it is. I can even change the methodology from traditional, so that that's one way of tracking things, to hybrid or to Agile. And notice it changes the way things are done. Um, I can again manage my financials, so that's also part of uh, this stage gates that you need to set up sort of your your costing for this project. In this case, it's defined as capex opex. It could be anything by year, for instance, if that's what you went to. And then even in real time, you can actually make a little chart here that shows you how you're spending money, and even expand that and drill down into whatever information is needed. For instance, cost category as a pie chart. There you go, CapEx versus OPEX. So we are here to just give you inspiration, but obviously any organization has their, their fields, their text uh, and, and their way of working. But we have strategic scoring as a subjective thing. We could do it as a group experience. Uh, the whole idea is to give you a strategic score of some kind so we can prioritize what that is all about. Um, we are still also working on, as the other part of the question you, you raised, uh, Jonathan, but we also are working on uh, finalizing our what if scenario builder, where we have, I think, I'm not sure if it's in, in enabled right now, hopefully it is, but this is actually a solution we're building and planning to release uh, next quarter, which is going to be the first tool I think out there that will combine real time scenario uh, building with Power BI, so not hard coded um, reports. What you're looking at here is the prototype where we have included projects in the portfolio and excluded. I can then drag drop projects into the portfolio. I can move them in time. I can resize them or shorten them, um, which uh, of course impacts both cost and money, uh, sorry, cost and people. And I can create scenarios up here or new scenarios so that we can uh, compare those. But the whole idea is that we can in real time fold out down here and see the result of these changes, but using Power BI charting. So reports that customers can do themselves. We will be the service then that actually allows you to do reprioritization of your work up here. Um, yeah, so I think that was a, a long detailed <laughs> answer, hopefully to the question. Were there more questions, Jonathan? Um, not right now, maybe let's give it a 30 seconds, a uh, couple of minutes or something like that to see if something comes in. All right. Otherwise, people are free to reach out afterwards. And uh, for this experience that I'm showing here called uh, Power PPM with all of these things, portfolio programs, projects, we offer that as a trial experience as well. So for those who are interested in trying out to create a portfolio or project and see how it works, um, maybe you're also interested in, in understanding how the new project works because that's for the instance, this one, the schedule tab here, but then reach out and we can spin you up a trial uh, within a day. Um, that's also the power of the new power platform that we can do those things. So um, if you go to our website uh, up here, or actually you can just write powerppm.net, you will arrive at the, this landing page. And if you click request free trial, you can quickly go in and sign up for a trial experience and then get your own system that you can play with. And you can also read more about the different capabilities, uh, what we offer within each bucket. This is in, uh, about portfolio management and and so on. So if there are no more questions, Jonathan, I think um, 
Can we round it off? Yeah, I think I think we'll round it up now. OK, perfect. Then uh, thank you for those of you who watched. Um, I think the video will be available on demand. Slides will be shared. You know where to get the trial. And uh, if you need anything else, reach out and, and just uh, send an email. My email is pk at projectum.com. Thanks for watching.